So how is the uh, new album? Like you said, you're working on it, but like at what stage are you with it? Uh, well, um, usually Evgeny, our keyboardist and uh, composer, writes all the songs. So I'd say we have like half of the album in the mm -hmm. instrumental format, but I just need to finish the books because I don't want to start writing the lyrics before I finish them all. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, I'm also, I also helped with a few melodies and yeah, concepts of the songs, but uh, you know, it's still in process, but with um, Napal Records, we already have a certain deadline. Like we both, both party, parties agreed on this. That's why, mm -hmm. I mean, we have to work. But uh, right now I'm just super occupied with uh, Bestia in terms of um, arranging all the merch production, mm -hmm. you know, and all the social media posts, all the advertising. Yeah. And stuff. So that's why I just want to, um, to stay in this within October, mm -hmm. then we just ship all the pre-orders and mm -hmm. then I just, you know, dive into this new album. Mm -hmm. But first Christmas and a break, I think that will be well deserved. Well, not Christmas, but in November, I'll be traveling to, I'll be traveling north to my favorite part of the world mm -hmm. <laughs> for one Which week one? and it's going to be a vacation. Uh, Which so, place, if we may ask? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be Denmark and Sweden. Mm. Nice. So, um, can you tell us about uh, like when you're releasing EP or even an album? So, what are the must things to have to promote it? Oh, you know, like everything is so rapidly changing nowadays. Um, I always compare like what we did in terms of promotion, like with the Sign of Faith album. It was already different and all mm -hmm. those things didn't work with the realms of iron death mm -hmm. so we had to do something else so i would say that uh, the best thing is to have everything in advance as much as you can mm -hmm. probably you won't be able to have it in the end but like do your best because doing something in the last minute it's like the worst thing to do and uh, preparing a list with, that you can you know just check 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 it's like the best thing um, and uh, planning ahead in terms of content plans and posts is also good. So, for example, with Bestia release, I did it better than I did with the Realms of Fire and Death mm -hmm. because like we're working with two bands and that's mm -hmm. why I just made, for example, a spreadsheet where I uh, put all the ideas for all the posts for two or three months. So mm. it's not necessary that you write them all right from the start, mm -hmm. but at least you know that this week, for example, you dedicate to the mermaid video. The mm -hmm. next week you uh, speak about merch more than you did mm -hmm. before. The next week is going to be more about, for example, I think that like next week, Asado are dropping their single and mm -hmm. then we will, we will also make um, an album teaser. So in advance, try to plan everything that you can and uh don't neglect uh, like the um, the media that are now more popular than for example before because uh even metal heads are using TikTok nowadays so i'm still trying to get there because like for me it's i don't i don't really love this platform but still you know I'm already posting TikToks, like, mm -hmm. for example, short clippings of the video or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yes. So just see what works best at the moment, because even with Instagram earlier, your posts every day, they worked better than anything else. Today, it's better, you know, you make one post, but very good and very responsive, like one post a week then you make it every day and they are so 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 yeah that's true and like with tiktok like i see it and i'm like this is going so fast like i'm in my 20s and i feel at lost at every social media you can just put stuff and so on it's crazy yeah, how it yeah. changes so yeah so we spoke a bit about the new album and nepal so we have a curious uh, 
viewer who is asking about Nepal uh, records and so on. So anything you want to share about Net Nepal uh, records? Oh, well, um, what can I say? They uh, made us an offer. We thought about it and we decided to take it because we believe that like this is like the best uh, stage for us to get signed and to have you know some extra help in terms of promotion and to bring it to another level and also um you know we respect this label we listen to quite a lot of bands from this label we have fellow bands from this label and i also think that our genre really fits uh, their roster so um We'll just see how it goes. I mean, I don't have any pink glasses or anything, but uh, I'm very excited to see what this collaboration can bring. Because like like I said in the announcement, like my quote was is like, the best thing is when it's mutually beneficial and that <laughs> the band gets something from the label and the label gets something mm -hmm. from the band. And that I'm, I hope that we can make the label proud as well. And I also hope that they will help us to reach another level of our development. So basically an experience, knowledge uh, and a network exchange like between both parties. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll just see, you know, it's just yeah, um, it's it also, always. Yeah, we, it also has some things that we're not used to because, I mean, before we were doing everything on our own and that mm -hmm. also implied that we made all decisions on our own. That's why now we have to, you know, we have to communicate everything that we want mm -hmm. to do. Like, it doesn't relate to the best year release because it's absolutely independent mm -hmm. and NATO has nothing to do with it and we agreed upon this right when we made the contract because mm -hmm. when they contacted us we will we already recorded best yes so no. it's also yeah. uh, it's also a collaboration with another band so mm -hmm. that's why our proper work will start with the next album mm -hmm. we look uh, forward to it what will bring so, so what new year will bring like um do you think some countries that you would like to visit some tours planning or um you just have to understand that a label doesn't have anything to do with shows. I mean, being signed can help you to get some extra shows because your band is visioned at another level. But mm -hmm. still, the booking agency is in charge of mm -hmm. all tours and, and stuff. So, um, again, it can help with networking, but, you know, it's not the same thing. So that's why, uh, well, of course, at some point, we would love to have a United States tour mm -hmm. because like 40% of our fans are from North America, Canada and stuff. So um, I think that being signed will help us, but not in terms of, you know, they will give us money and we will fly there. No, <laughs> but uh, the thing is even applying for visas, mm -hmm when applying for visas it will help us that we will have like a contract with a label that also mm -hmm. has an office in the united states so okay. it's like even with this stuff it's more beneficial to be signed so i hope so and we were supposed to tour this november in europe and in the united kingdom finally mm -hmm. but uh, but it was postponed uh, also because of the restrictions in some countries and also mm -hmm. because some of the bands in the lineup they were not from europe and like it was mm -hmm. a complication so we hope that uh, the dates will be transferred to the next year and we'll also have mm -hmm. some shows you know separate shows planned for the first half of 2022. So for example, mm -hmm. the nearest show is Norway Oslo in January. As far as we know, Norway lifts all the restrictions. So now mm -hmm. we just have to keep our fingers crossed that Ukrainians will be allowed there because mm -hmm. um, in Ukraine, the number of cases of COVID cases is growing again very rapidly and the level of vaccination here is quite low so all the band members of ignea are vaccinated so if norway 
continues allowing vaccinated Ukrainians there, I hope that this show will happen. But what about your own country? Would you do any uh, concerts with the uh, best release with Arsido? Well, the thing is that uh, 95 percent of our audience is not from Ukraine. Okay. And uh, we played a festival this year. It's one of the best and almost the biggest festival that you can have metal on in Ukraine this summer. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. We played there for the second time. Uh, but in terms of touring, I just don't mm -hmm. see any reason right now. Also, because of the rising COVID cases. And for example, last year we made a show in Kiev, in our hometown and in the capital. Mm -hmm. So it was a socially distanced show with seated people wearing masks and stuff. And I mean, even, you know, in the morning of that day, we didn't know if, if it would be happening just because like the restrictions, they were changing all the time. And that's why I just, you know, if we arrange a tour, it can mm -hmm. just drop, it can fall apart at any moment. And I don't see that it can be reasonable right now. And also yeah. un until we reach a certain level of vaccinations in mm -hmm. Ukraine, I don't want to be part of the shows, you know. Let's go to a happier uh, topic as we are here for EP Best. Yeah. So actually, like, uh, like Fennis is a fan from uh, Greece. So he's asking if you would come to Greece. Yeah, we would. But we just need, again, um, talk to your local promoters and uh, share our music with, uh, with people from Greece. And we will gladly come. I mean, uh, Greece was one of the first countries that opens for Ukraine after, like, in, in, during the pandemic. So we will gladly come. Great. So, um, great. So let's back to the EP. Uh, I'm wondering, how does the collaboration with Ursado make your music more complete? Well, I think that, again, we were basically collaborating on one song. And uh, this song was primarily written by them in terms of music. And I added my lyrics on top and some vocal melodies. So it's like, I don't think that we are influencing each other much within this release. But also, like I said before, like every year we're sharing our demos and stuff. So we get inspirations from each other also, just because we're sharing this stuff. And, um, you know, we're sharing the music that we like between each other. So this is how this is how it affects. It's amazing. And I think what we see at the Metal Galaxy that like music is a lifestyle, like it's like a connection between people and so on. It's great to just collaborate with others, exchange music and so on. Yeah, yeah. I really hope that uh, on the next album, we are planning to make some collaborations as well. Well, not like with a Sado, but mostly with guest musicians. At least we're planning to. We will see how it goes. So. That would be interesting. And it's interesting, like I heard also that AFM, I don't know if you heard about them, but they saw the interview which you did last year and they started listening uh, to Ignea and so on. They were looking forward for a collaboration. We might ask them what's happening with their. Uh, can you tell the name once again? AFM. AFM, they are a symphonic metal band from Italy. No, I, I, I think I, I will, uh, we will let yeah, you know like in the they, <laughs> Yeah, AFM, uh, sorry, uh, I wanted. But mm -hmm. like, I mean, it's interesting that we are doing interviews and so on, and then bands starting to talking about other bands and yeah. so on. Yeah, yeah. But I also, you know, I, I've been approached by uh, quite a few people regarding like uh, having me as a guest vocalist and uh, I just right at the moment I just I have to decline some offers just because I'm really overloaded and I think that if I hop on everything now yeah. it will just make the album that we're working on worse that's mm -hmm. why again I'm just um, if I had all the time in the world, I would gladly do it, but 
you know, right now I'm just I just have to sacrifice some stuff for the sake of doing everything well with EGM at the moment. Yeah, you are one person, like you can't like yes, like yeah, an octopus. Yes. But yeah, I also have, uh, you know, I'd love to have a side project at some point because I have some songs that are not really metal songs. Mm -hmm. And again, and I, I was just, I'm, I'm usually showing them to patrons. And um, sometimes it's usually like me singing with a guitar. But then I'm, I just realized that I have quite a few songs, you know, I mean, like eight or nine so mm -hmm. they just lack arrangements and sometimes words sometimes you know and i would love to give it a go as well because i listen to a lot of different genres of music mm -hmm. so that's yeah. why i just i don't know where to have all this time and this is actually i really hope that napalm records will help you will take some work off my shoulders mm -hmm. in terms of the promotional stuff you know yeah, yeah looking forward to it because i'm tired of doing this i can imagine that and yeah. you are like very artistic like i saw once you with the acoustic guitar which was really nice and then you had an id for a black metal project i'm like whoa that's interesting when is yes it going to yes happen? and i mean and yeah i would love to do it all but yeah you have only 24 hours yeah exactly per day. yeah so we have another question from finance like most of it was answered but the last bit so uh with which bands uh, would you like to go on tour have you ever considered if you could oh well it's always a very complicated question because like i know how touring works in terms of the music industry and usually the bands that you really like they won't be fitting for you in terms mm -hmm. of touring because uh for example i can um i don't know i can listen to behemoth but we won't be doing well on tour together in terms of the crowds you know yeah. or for example mm, i don't know i can pick up some some hardcore bands again it won't work that's why <laughs> that's why um I don't know each lineup is very unique and sometimes you have to go diverse because our first tour we, we toured with il dispose and they are you know a thrash death metal band mm -hmm. from denmark and it worked well surprisingly but mm -hmm. uh, but to do it every time like with such such a band it would be strange so that's why i also see that there is a question like in terms of north america then it would really make sense to tour with someone from from north america because mm -hmm. they already have audience there they already know what to expect because from all the stories from other musicians and from everything that i know touring the us is like an absolutely different thing from touring europe so it's like it's very complicated for europeans yeah, exactly. It's never easy with touring. Well, yes, but at least with Europe, you know what to expect, you know, yeah. and everything, even even if you're in the farthest corner of Europe, you're still close to your home. And if anything goes wrong, like you can even fly, it took, takes a few hours. <laughs> and um, even touring within Europe, again, we have like, everything is more common within these countries you know mm -hmm. you can solve all the problems and um when you come to the us you even cannot bring all the gear that you want to because it's too far away and it's like exactly. as far as we know the bands have to buy all the back line there because they cannot bring it so it's like a lot of arrangements have to yeah, be yeah. yeah. that's a lot to take in <laughs> So, uh, Veronica, any other questions you have? No, uh, we have one of Fanny's um, asking if uh, he listened to a new Ginger album, uh, because you're on the same label. Yeah, we <laughs> or, also have uh, a sound producer. So, yeah, I listened to it 
what can I say? Like they, <laughs> they are professional musicians, but just I don't I don't I'd say it's not like my cup of tea. Mm. And uh, I I see them more as a live band rather than a studio band. So like they're always nailing it at live shows. And um and it's not alien weapons. I think it's alien weapon. Weaponry. Yeah. yeah. They are very cool, and I think that they are very authentic. You know. Mm. Yeah. So wrapping it up, I'm wondering about uh, the new album. Like, is it like printed out? Can you sh give us a peek, or does it still need to be printed out? Uh, do you mean the best year album? Yeah, 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 best, yeah, it's, not the new, new one. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's in production right now. And I mean, this pandemic affected all the deadlines. And uh, for example, um, with vinyls, it's like for everybody, it's like waiting yeah. for six months. And um, we managed to, to make the shipping of vinyls in December for Bestia. And it's okay. actually quite early. And um, yeah, I, I think that's like this um, artwork, um, you can see it on our website. It really fits both the CD and vinyl. So it's going to be very, it will be good to hold it in your hands. You know, Certainly. And the details. I'm looking forward to hold uh, the Pistia uh, CD as it looks really beautiful on uh, how it looks like and so on. So it's just, it will be a surprise how it will look like when it arrives. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can see the artwork um, oh, yeah. on the websites and everything. So Yeah, but that looks really good. Yeah. So and yeah. I really like the idea with different colors as well. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, well... <laughs> It was unintentional because, um, like, this artwork was made by Asedu, and uh, we were also like, um, we came to their place, and they were showing us a lot of different versions in terms of mm -hmm. colors. And we were arguing a lot which to pick, and that's why, like, um, we decided to make like this um, yellow and blue because mm -hmm. it's the color of Ukrainian flag. Mm. So nice. it also makes sense because it's mm -hmm. an album related to the Ukrainian mythology. But we also really liked uh, this another version that is called, we called it um, Ice Blood. Mm. And uh, we decided why not make vinyl in this color. And we also have posters in all the colors that we had like to yeah. choose from. Yeah. So. Amazing tart. to limit ourselves. <laughs> tart work is really nice for uh, self. So yeah, uh, before we rent up, uh, so there is an upcoming album and probably some surprises for the split EP, and you share some spoilers, secrets, and so on. But any last final words that you want uh, to share? Oh, I just want to say. Um like the music industry is slowly wakening up. So if you are in a country that already lifted all the restrictions, please go to the shows and support your local musicians. And um, if there are still restrictions, then just try to support musicians by streaming music, buying merch. And even if you cannot help financially, just watch a video on YouTube or share it to your friends. I mean, it always helps and it's free of charge, but the more you do it, the more you help uh, the musicians that you love and the more it will help us to get back to touring when all the borders will be open again. Yeah, yeah. and stay Sorry. healthy, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we agree on that one, but we would also say pre-order the best album as like the music is great the artwork is great so we'll provide uh, links uh, below and uh, basically that was it for the bestia ep so you just got a, a peek and uh, stay in touch uh, subscribe and follow our group the metal galaxy for more metal news and we certainly will release a review on the new album so keep an eye on our uh, channel and we want to thank uh, Hella for sharing secrets and some uh, 
stories about the uh, new P uh, Bestia and talking more about Ignea. So thank you, Ella, for tonight. So I'm just giving Vero to round it up. That's everything. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.